In Libya, a frightening and intricate political corner of North Africa, the Trump administration risks putting itself in an untenable situation of backing two horses in the same race the recognized government of Libya and the rebels knocking at the door of the capital. The United States must quickly decide where its long-term interests lie and then embrace that avenue unreservedly. Otherwise, the civil war that has now begun will only intensify. And Libya, fractured into two halves after the Arab Spring the West ruled by Tripoli and the East ruled from Benghazi by insurgents, could easily fall prey to forces antithetical to American interests. For some background, insurgent military forces have fielded Marshal Khalifa after our rolling toward the capital of Tripoli, where Prime Minister Fayez al-Sarraj leads a government, which the UN and much of the Western world recognized more than three years ago in an effort to bring peace to the country. Nominally, the Trump administration joined with Britain, France, Italy, the United Arab Emirates and the United Nations, as recently as April 4, backing the Tripoli government. And, on April 7, Secretary of State Michael Pompeo elaborated, we have made clear that we oppose the military offensive by Khalifa Haftar's forces and urge the immediate halt to these military operations against the Libyan capital. Forces should return to status quo ante positions. All involved parties have a responsibility to urgently de-escalate the situation. Dot, however, Pompeo's remarks do not reflect the tightrope that the U.S. must walk now that Saudi Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman and Egyptian ruler Abdel Fattah el-Sisi have declared support for Haftar. In fact, Haftar's forces are being aided by millions of dollars in aid pledged by Saudi Arabia promised in the weeks before he launched his campaign. And since the insurgency has begun, Haftar has received additional air power from Egypt and the same UAE that signed the Five Power Statement urging an end to the fighting. There are a host of reasons for ambivalence on the part of foreign powers and their varying degrees of support for the insurgent forces. For example, the Tripoli government includes in its coalition the Libyan political party of the Muslim Brotherhood, a prime opponent of the Sisi government. Tripoli has also failed to halt waves of African and Middle East refugees that have used Libya as a jumping-off point to Italy and asylum in Western Europe. Beyond the failures of the Tripoli government, Haftar has been especially effective at beating back terrorist efforts to achieve a strong foothold in Libya. In May 2015, ISIS seized the coastal town of Sirdan oil center originally under Tripoli's control. Meanwhile, al-Qaeda moved into a vacuum in eastern Libya. Both groups have since been ousted, and in part thanks to Haftar's forces. So while Haftar would seem to have been doing the bidding of the United States, France and Italy, all at least, are still nominally supporting the Tripoli government. Yet Egypt, Saudi Arabia and the UAE are backing Haftar's forces against the Tripoli regime with arms and funding.